And good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Brew here live on Brew Sports, a Wednesday edition of the program. And my, oh, my, is there a ton of stuff to talk about, not only in the sports world, but in general. My goodness, there's fake mud on jeans on purpose. Next thing you're going to be telling me, people are going to be putting holes in their jeans on purpose. Either way, we'll get to that in a minute. But more importantly, it is, of course, the round two of the NHL playoffs. Jamie is beside herself excited. She even is so excited, she even got dressed normally today as well, too. My gosh. Good morning to you, Jamie. How are you today? Good. How are you? Doing well, actually. I'm very excited. Uh, I was trying to think of exciting words to use to describe myself. Like you had your three big words that you used yesterday, and we yeah. were all like, what? Like She's so intelligent. I know. Such a smart girl, and she knows sports. Oh, my God. Somebody put a ring on it right now. Like I'm sure like everyone's just clamoring and like, oh, my gosh. She's smart. She's pretty. She knows sports. Like You're like the perfect woman. Gosh, Jamie. Like Just stop. Like hey. Might as well. <laughs> Hi, boys. How are you? <laughs> Good morning. Good to see you. My gosh. Holy cow, Jamie. But yes, tonight, of course, a very exciting time, not only for just in general the sports world, but as a whole, though. The hockey nation continues to surprise so many people. I'd like to think the hockey playoffs have been more exciting than the NBA playoffs thus far, I feel like. I would agree, but I might be a little biased. So. Well, I mean, I'm unbiased, and I'm telling you that okay. I, that would be my opinion. I mean, for the, everybody knows my, my thoughts and feelings about a lot of the, the hockey and basketball and everything world. So, I mean, right. it's no secret that I'd like to be a little negative at times with how certain things go with, with all of those sports. But that's not the case today. Today's a good day. Today's an right. exciting day, of course. So... We're obviously very excited. We are asking two questions of the day today. Uh, one uh, has to do with the playoffs, of course. So on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, how excited are you for round two of the NHL ten. playoffs? There you go. We got Jamie's vote. She's at a hard 10. Uh, I'm making it around to like an 8 to 9. Oh, yeah? There. Yeah, I'm excited Dexter. for it. I know. I actually made predictions for round two, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, our NHL correspondent, uh, Max Walpole, is going to be here as well, too, to chat with us, uh, to give us his insights as well, too. So... Excited to have Max on in just a little bit for that as well, too. Also, if anybody was wondering, Baxter sent me a Snapchat this weekend of him and Beckham True. watching some playoff hockey. So. Yes, we watched some playoff hockey. Beckham was a little bit more into it than I was, but still, like he was like super enamored by the fact that the Blues went up 2-0 on the Wild in the first period and then couldn't believe that they had to go all the way to overtime to finally seal the deal. So he was beside himself. He fell asleep at, after oh. a while, but... He's like, I can't watch anymore, Dad. Like, I just let me know how it ends, kind of thing. So he's like, I'll check Twitter when I wake up. He's got a little baby Twitter phone that he tweets from his crib. <laughs> I'm sure that's not actually true. Maybe he does. Nowadays, honestly, with certain kids, you have no idea. The technology, I can't even imagine the technology he's going to have when even he's in like elementary or middle school, right. honestly. Like, that's only five to seven years away. Like, I can't even imagine. Probably people going to be having like flying cars and stuff by that point, I'm sure. I hope not, but you never know. Anyway, a very good morning to everybody tuning in, of course. Luis, Liz, uh, Adam, among others as well, too. Tom, good to see all of you this morning, uh, among all the other people. Remember, like, we are asking the two questions of the day, so let us know your thoughts. A scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you for round two of the NHL playoffs? And then Jamie asked the conspiracy question, um, because you were freaking out about your Echo Dot last night, apparently. Uh, what tech do you own that you are skeptical of the government following you on? <laughs> Uh, it seemed like an interesting, unique question, so I was like, well, why not? We'll ask it, because some people get a little uh, little self-conscious about that. Um, family members of mine like put the little like sticker over like the, the forward-facing camera, or the back-facing camera. On Is their it the laptops? forward or the back-facing? Or both, like not only on their laptop, but on their cell phone and iPads really? as well, too. Yeah. Huh. I, it, hey, it's government. A, yeah, exactly. How, how? I know. I'm like, hi, you can see me here. Do you, you like this angle of me? You like that angle of me? I'm like, if you want to know what I'm doing, <laughs> like just... Watch what I'm doing here. Like, right. I'm pretty vocal and open about my life, but some people get pretty like spooked out about that, honestly. Sarah is also tuning in. Good morning to you, Sarah. I'll try not to heckle you as bad this morning. Uh, Josh lets us know that he's, uh, he's a seven for the, for, the, for the next round. He's excited. I'll take well, What did we ask yesterday? Oh, the NFL draft. NFL draft. And people were kind of all over the place with that. Like, eh, three, six, nine. Yeah, we're, we're above fives right now, so I'm, I'm happy. Average right now, you've got a 10, you've got an eight from me, a seven from Josh. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a passing grade. That's a, that's a, that's a college degree right whoop, there. Whoop. Liz says, good morning, beautiful people. Good morning to you, Liz, you beautiful woman, you. Anyway, that's my wife, for any of those that didn't know. Anyway, hi, wife. Love you. All right, anyway, uh, so what's brewing this morning, Jamie, as we get into the sports world? Uh, I know there's a lot of weird things going on, um, but as you were telling me before we went on the air, uh, something to do with free beer or cheap beer or yeah, beer, beer so in general. There's a lot of beer, and people love beer, of course. People do love beer. So the Houston Rockets, uh, I lied for game five. Um, they had, what's the date today? 
twenty-six. Four, four twenty-six. Okay, so they had dollar beers. Had. had had. There we go. Past tense. Uh, for game five, which I think is a great promotional idea. Um, I was explaining to Baxter too that. Um, working for the Admirals, we've had beer specials, and people just love them because you well, go to a course. stadium. Okay, so I was at Miller Park on Sunday, a uh, Monday, and I bought two, a Coors Light and a High Life, and it was like nineteen fifty. <laughs> yeah, so I could buy nineteen Ow. beers. I bought I bought two six packs of cider yesterday for less than that. Yeah, so ah, uh, that mm-hmm. just. That kills you. Yeah, maybe it was eighteen fifty, but it was like, oh yeah, they were expensive. Gosh. Uh, which That's is just fine like a, what, like a, I think six, it was like twenty ounces. Wow. Okay. That of makes... piss beer. Still, but like twenty ounces of individual, like twenty ounces of Coors, twenty ounces of that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, if you bought twenty total ounces, no, and you paid that much money, I'm like, you need to go and sue no. the brewers because I would've, it that's would've... robbery. Yeah. No. 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 It would have had to be like a triple IPA. Because then I would have been drunk and it would have been worth it. <laughs> like, um, woo! Right now. So I think that that's a great promotional, a, a great promo to get people in the doors. You know, they weren't really worried about, or or they're worried about the, the home court advantage. And I think part of that is having it full and fun and loud. Mm-hmm. And that's a really good way to to do that, I think. Mm. No, and I agree with you on that one too. I mean, coincidentally, when you speak about cheap beer and cheap food and cheap at ease as a whole... Did you hear that Taco Bell is also introducing beer on their menus? I did. I did what? hear that. <laughs> it's starting in Canada, though, of course. Of course, because Canada gets everything. They get legalized marijuana. They get free health care. They get beer at Taco Bell. Yeah, nice people there. I mean, stop, Canada. Everybody already doesn't like you anyway because you're so damn nice. Right. Like, you're making the rest of the world upset. Like, this is ridiculous. I wonder. Obviously, you're probably not going to be able to buy it through the drive through but like... <laughs> I, I also don't think having a Can you beer. Imagine like yeah. I'll take a cheesy gordita crunch and a dos Equis, please. Right, having like a a beer and a crunchwrap supreme doesn't really seem like it fits well. Maybe. Like maybe margarita. Well, that's the thing. Like the articles that I've been reading and on Twitter, it's like you know, oh, like of course when you think of talk, when you think of Mexican food, you think of beer. Well, I think of like you know my strawberry margaritas or my anything else that has something to do with a lot of sugar and. Alcohol. And I don't right. think of having a good Dos Equis or a good, you know, Coors Light. Like, I'd, I'd be like your your typical, like, Miller's yeah, like, and yeah. High Life and all that Or it'll that probably stuff. be like a Labatt's or something. Probably. Something or like Canadian. Mo- Milwaukee's best or something. I don't know. Twitter seemed to have a heyday with it, too. Some people they were, always do. were, you know, pumped about it. And another girl, Emma McDonald, <laughs> that's funny, uh, she says, <laughs> I don't want beer. I want a five layered burrito. <laughs> okay. Touche. Well, I mean, I agree with her. I'm not. I don't really eat Taco Bell to begin with. I mean, let's be honest. Though. They just because of the fact that they just legalized marijuana, though. I mean, of course, people are going to be hungry. They don't want to spend a lot of money, so they're going to go to Taco Bell. Right. And then by the point, you're also going to be like, well, I might as well drink. I'm already high, so I already have free health care. So if I do something stupid, I'm covered anyway. <laughs> so like, it covers all your all your bases at that point. Yeah, I guess. It just makes <laughs> makes me chuckle to myself, honestly. Uh, what also makes me chuckle about the sports world as a whole is that Jeb Bush and Derek Jeter. Are buying the Miami Marlins, sure the group are. rather, not the two of them, the, the Bush right. Jeter group, whatever. I don't even know Jeb Bush liked baseball. I know George does. We know W does. He's been throwing out first pitches, and I think he's like a partial owner of a team down in Texas as well, too. Probably but, just likes money more. But still, like, isn't that like the weirdest pairing? Like Derek Jeter, like you know, playboy, good-looking guy, like successful, and then politician Jeb Bush. Like, how did that? How, I want to know how that conversation went maybe, to get the to get those two like in the same room. Well, maybe they were friends already, and we just didn't know it. I'm sure Derek knows a lot of people, and Jeb knows a lot of people, of course. Um, and I think maybe it's a good idea because they're two people with two polar opposite opposite right like lifestyles and views and whatever, so they can combine into this master plan to make, <laughs> to make the Mar the Marleys. <laughs> Uh, successful. I think they're going to need more of the new ownership, but what do I know? Well, I mean, it was we found out yesterday, too, uh, John Carlos Stanton, a.k.a. Mike, uh, you know, doing everything that he can, too. I mean, we finally figured that out, that, you know, he just went by Mike as a kid instead of John Carlo, as we found out yesterday from Adam Shapiro, or Andrew Shapiro, one of our baseball correspondents, because John Carlo was too hard to stay, to say as a kid for, for uh-huh. his friends. So he's like, just call me Mike, Mike Stanton. 
hmm, okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Marlins certainly are going to take a, a, a different approach to this. Uh, we'll see if Jeter and uh, the good man there, Jeb Bush, can help revitalize. Uh, I see one of our baseball correspondents, Alfredo Muentes, tuning in right now. I'd love to get Alfredo's thoughts about this at some point, about since he is down in that Florida market. So, uh, Alfredo, if you're watching, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. <laughs> uh, Luis is saying on Facebook, too, that Uruguay is basically the Canada of South America. Everything is freaking legal there. Hmm. Well, I mean... What are you, you going to do, I guess? Josh also uh, commenting about our, one of our questions of the day, saying that he works in IT and he has uh, programmers that cover their cameras on their computer all the time. Hmm. People get self-conscious about this kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, my cell phone is right down there. Like, I'm, if the government wanted to be listening, they probably could. But, I mean, my theory is, like, if the government wants to find something out, they're going to do it. I don't need to take – because I put a little, like, smiley face sticker over my camera, right. they're still going to find me. I saw an article about a woman who was murdered – okay, this is gross, but she was murdered by her husband, <laughs> okay. and the they um, tracked it to her husband because they tracked her Fitbit. Oh, And that's how, how they smart. discovered that he – The secret reason that I wear a, an Apple Watch if my wife decides to ever murder me. Yeah? No. I'll murder him for you, Liz. Then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Why are we planning my murder all of a sudden? Everybody calm down. Goodness. I'm trying to make you seem like you're a nice gal and you're just trying to kill people. It's the cute I'm ones you got to watch out for, I'm folks. still crazy. She still is, I'm right? Still a girl. <laughs> true. That is also true. Josh also says uh, maybe, they met, uh, many, maybe they met in Canada at a Taco Bell and pounded a few and then just said, hey, you want to buy a baseball team together? Talking about Jeb Bush and Derek Jeter. Maybe. Like, Could Canada, be. like, I've been to Toronto recently. Like, it's, it's a fun city to be in. Like, it's very much like a rejuvenized Chicago, almost, when you think about hmm. what Chicago is like. Toronto is a fun city. I'm all about it. I'm excited about it. Of course, Toronto as a whole, excited also about uh, hockey, of course. But the Maple Leafs, not so much. They uh, end up losing 4-2 to two, uh, in the opening round to the Washington Capitals after being up two games to none in that series a little surprising. Uh, a gentleman that knows a thing or two about the hockey world uh, is one of our NHL correspondents, Max Walpoff. I believe I got that right. Uh, Max, a very good morning to you, sir. How are you today? Good morning. And to correct you, it was up two games to one. Sorry, ah, I'm a Capitals fan. I'm a Capitals fan. I know a little <laughs> bit too much about them. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. Like, give us a little bit more credit than just being down two games tonight. I completely understand that, Max. But, uh, of course, uh, let's start with your Capitals then uh, as a whole. I mean, they, they win that first series 4-2. to two. I know I got that correct for sure. Uh, and now they come into the second round. Uh, and, of course, they have to go from Toronto, who was a little bit of a, a test, and now they have to deal with a team like Pittsburgh. A little surprising overall, I think, but uh, what is this series like to you in your mind, and uh, what are the chances for either of these two teams to come out victorious? I think part of it is with the Washington Capitals. They went through a test in the first round with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and the Maple Leafs, in a couple of years, they're going to contend. Like Once Austin Matthews gets his free agency money, and once William Nylander and Mitch Marner get re-signed, they're going to be contenders. But as far as the Capitals go, they got a bigger test this year than they got in the Philadelphia Flyers last year. That series went six, largely because the Flyers willed themselves to victory in two games. But Pittsburgh had a very easy time against Columbus. And a lot of that was because they were still able to call up guys from their AHL team in Wilkes-Barre Scranton and play surprisingly well i compared them in one of the other blogs i write for to hydra where if one goes down two rise up to replace them and chris letang <laughs> and Oli mata both are gone and cameron gaunts from the wilkesbury scranton penguins is apparently proving to be a worthwhile replacement i think jake gensel has had a wonderful playoffs he's translating a lot of wilkesbury scranton success but washington has sort of come around in the last they came around in the last two games against Toronto really showing the who they are on defense team especially with Nate Schmidt being inserted into the lineup he's basically said to him said to the team I am that defender sorry Carl Alsner but I'm taking your spot uh, a lot of people are talking uh, pretty big about this uh, the Pittsburgh Washington game um, Ovechkin Crosby <laughs> Uh, everyone, the keeps talking, yeah, everyone keeps talking about the matchup on that. What are your thoughts? How do you think they're going to play against each other in such a high-caliber game? 
I think the matchup's more Backstrom versus Crosby because, again, they play the same position. They might get matched up against each other when it comes to Pittsburgh. But I think in Washington, it'll probably be Backstrom against maybe the Letang, maybe the, uh, not the Latang pairing, he's injured, but maybe the Malkin line, perhaps the Kessel line if they really want to go for a chance there. But Alex Ovechkin, he hit 30. He's getting old and he has to, he knows he has to win. I don't doubt that for a fact. He knows this is the time and this is the place. But also, Pittsburgh's got an Olympian on basically every line. They're a tough team, and they also have a really good goaltender in Marc-Andre Fleury in net. But there's a conundrum. If Matt Murray comes back healthy, does he start? And that's a question Mike Mike Sullivan has to answer. I just have to go on the record to say that hockey goalkeepers have literally the best last names. Like Flurry and Latang and Lundquist, like all. Oh, I'm just like really like no other sport has cool goal na- cool keeper names. That's because like everyone's this. foreign, so they're well like, cooler well, than like Johnson Smith. Well, obviously, I mean, but still, I just think it's the coolest sport. Though, like, I would love to get into hockey broadcasting purely just to talk about the goalkeepers. <laughs> like, you hear the commentators get so hyped up about some of those things, and like Latang with the save, I'm like yeah, I'm like get excited. <laughs> like, I don't even know who that is, but that's great. No, I'm kidding. I do know who that is. So moving away from the Capitals, moving away from all the excitement from there, we got to talk. About the series of course that jamie is just dying in her seat to talk about predators blues uh blues almost sweeped their uh, opponent in the wild of course they had to go to a couple of games after to finally finish off the wild in overtime predators complete the sweep of the blackhawks of course still i think a lot of people are in shock about that chicago's just like we'll get them next game like no guys like you lost like it's right. over like accept it kind of a thing Jamie, for, I'll start with you, then we'll go to you, Max. How do you look at the series as a whole? Um, I think if Nashville can go into the series with as much uh, excitement and as much drive as they did the first round, I think that they'll be fine. Um, I've said this before. Jake Allen played, obviously, for the Chicago Wolves, um, and a lot of these guys that are playing for the Predators played on the Admirals. So right. they've played against him for, for many seasons, and they play Chicago so often because, one, they're close, and two, they're in our division, obviously. Um do I think Nashville's going to win? Yes. Is you it? Do. <laughs> I do. Uh, is it because I'm a good, loyal, loving fan? Yes. Do I also think that they have the power to do it and, and that they've evolved this season and that the Subban Weber trade is going to help? Yes. They are going to win this route. <laughs> Get excited. So okay. Excited. So aside from Jamie's <laughs> horrific Homer status there, no, she was, she was, I mean, there was a little bit of analytics in there too. But Max, what do you say as a, as a unbiased uh, analyst in this regards? In this regard, I have Nashville going to the finals and losing to losing to Edmonton, actually. Mm. Nashville has Pecorine playing at Vesna quality as if it's 2012. Uh, only Colton Sissons, as, out of their whole Senders lineup, is below 500 on the faceoff dot. Nashville has been really good. Their possession numbers are strong, especially against a Chicago team that just didn't show up to play. Like the big difference between Chicago and Nashville from the regular season, like if you look at the whole standings of Chicago on top, Nashville on the bottom, if you take away if you take away power play, if you take away three on three overtime, and if you take away the shootout, suddenly they're a much more even team. I give it to Nashville every day with Roman Yossi, PK Subban, Victor Arvidson, Philip Forsberg. Give me the Predators. Give me Smashville. I love it. No, I mean, I completely agree with you on that one, too. I wanted to go back and reference Adam briefly on Facebook. He says he's taking the Penguins in six uh, in uh, in their series against the Capitals. So uh, take that for what it is uh, for those of you that are out there. Uh, We'd love to know your thoughts, of course. We are asking one of our questions of the day on a scale of 1 to 10. How excited are you for the second round of the NHL playoffs? Jamie is at a 1,000. Uh, out of ten, I am at a, about an eight. Uh, you know, as we mentioned earlier too, Adam is talking about uh, his prediction with Penguins in six. Uh, I think Josh said that he's a seven out of ten as well too. So let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you uh, in that regards. Uh, oops, sorry, go ahead. You, you, you uh, I heard a stat. You know, I heard a stat yesterday that Nashville has the. Correct me if I'm wrong, Max, because it's just something I heard on the radio. Uh, I can't believe those people. Yeah, it wasn't the internet though. <laughs> uh, that Nashville's defense has the most points in the league, and I believe the Blues have like the fifth and and I know that Nashville has an extremely strong I could I could believe that yeah back so I uh, is that is that right do you know that 
give me a second and I can find out, but I'm okay. not totally sure on that. Hang well, on. I, I think a person to ask to, Robbie Stanley is watching into one of our NHL correspondents. Robbie, if you're watching, I don't know if you just caught Jamie's bit too. Robbie covers the, the Predators for NHL.com, is also one of our correspondents too. So if Robbie still is watching, so ask your question again, see if Robbie can, uh, can help you out on that one. I think I heard <laughs> that <laughs> prefaced Nashville, this first yeah. by saying I think uh, that Nashville has the f- the most their defense has the most points out of anybody in the NHL and the Blues are like fifth. I would ass- I think that would make a lot of sense because from what I've been seeing from these games thus far, a lot of the goals and assists have been coming from the defensemen, which I think to my knowledge is a little bit uncharacteristic as a whole of hockey. I mean that's why you have your your front line, your forwards because they're the ones that are going to put the puck in the net. But come playoff time, it's however the puck goes in the net is just how it works out, right. obviously. And I think from what I've been hearing, uh, that's been the case. Uh, Max, did you have any uh, any luck on your research, sir? Uh, I have like a little bit of luck. So Nashville has, I mean, they've got two good defensemen who can move the puck well. They've got, they've got. Uh, hang on, sorry, just missing the number here. Here it is. Roman Yossi with two goals and an assist. They've got Ryan Ellis with four points. P.K. Subban had two assists in the last series. And also they're, they did play a smaller sample size than what the St. Louis Blues had, but the Blues definitely are not the team that they were a few years ago, and especially since it's, it looked like for a while they picked the wrong goaltender out of Jake Allen and whoever ended up in Calgary, but Jake Allen's come along very well for them. But as far as defense goes, the only one that's making any mark for St. Louis is Joel Edmondson with two goals. So Nashville's defense is a key part of their offense as well, and a lot of that does come from P.K. Subban. That is true. Yeah, P.K. Subban, of course, we've talked about it numerous times. You got to meet his mom apparently a couple of weeks I ago did. as well, too, She's and you're nice still kind of kind of beside yourself. I mean, Jamie Subban has a nice last, has a nice ring to it, but that's irrelevant to the conversation. Uh, let's talk about Edmonton and the Ducks. Of course, Edmonton uh, was horrible for such a long time. They've finally gotten some of the right pieces in, a lot of young pieces as well, too. Anaheim, I feel like, has just quietly been scooting through the playoffs right now. No one's really talked, to my knowledge, on a national scale about what the Ducks have been doing. Uh, Max, we'll start with you, then we'll go to you, Jamie. Uh, your thoughts about this series as a whole, and uh, you kind of already previewed in the fact that you have Edmonton meeting the Predators, but uh, go a little bit deeper into why you believe Edmonton will take out the Ducks. I firmly believe that despite the fact that Connor McDavid's the captain of the Edmonton Oilers, this is Milan Lucic's team. And Milan Lucic knows exactly what he can get away with in the playoffs. He went on the cup run with the Boston Bruins in 2011. He, he, is, he is a playoff pest, and he is noted for how horrible he can be to play against. And he doesn't need to take away the top players. He just needs to take away their attention from Connor McDavid. So the Anaheim Ducks are going to get Semi Vatanen back. They're going to get Cam Fowler back. But they still have a huge question mark in that of if John Gibson can show up to play. He had a 9.26 save percentage. Compare that to Cam Talbot, who had a 9.27, but that's also inflated by the five goals he allowed in the 7 nothing loss to San Jose in Game 4. I still think Edmonton is a very good team, but they did get slaughtered in the faceoff circle by a much better San Jose center core. I still think, I don't know if anyone on the Ducks can keep up with Connor McDavid because they're going to have to rely on guys like Ryan Kessler to get under McDavid's skin. And McDavid is a very poised 19 year old. That's part of the reason he's captain of that team. But give me Milan Lucic just rubbing it all over everyone's <laughs> face about. Give me Milan Lucic at his playoff best, and everyone's going to be talking about Milan Lucic. I had never even heard of Milan Lucic, and now I feel like I'm never going to get that name <laughs> out of my head now, thanks to Max. So that's, he, that's a great part of it. He's a cup him. champion. Like, they've also got Patrick Maroon, who is just a big rig and just will just sma- smash people into the boards, and everyone will start cheering. And even everyone in the concourse level, like, I don't know if you saw this or not, but the Edmonton Oilers are selling concourse passes for $80 to stand in the concourse of the arena, not have a seat, and just oh. watch the game on monitors. Just, just hang out. That's basically like standing yeah. room hang in out. the United Center, right? Because that, that then you're just like... Is, yes. You're in the building. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. You're, you're, in the, yeah, you're in the building. You're there to see the Edmonton Oilers in the playoffs, and it's $80 Canadian. So that's, that's a like pretty good deal. <laughs> six bucks American? No, that's, I know it's more than that, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Robbie actually did finally chime in to give us his thoughts. He said, uh, it's between Nashville and San Jose, actually. I haven't looked in a while. Nashville had 181 points from their defensemen in the regular season. That's ridiculous, personally, to think about that. I mean, 
the fact that Nashville has had so much success. And I, I feel like Nashville, I mean, they were, they're an eight seed. Let's not forget this as well. They're a wild card. I mean, this is a team that barely made it into the NHL playoffs. And now people are talking like they are the one seed almost with how everyone's all of a sudden like, well, of course Nashville's a good team. Like, they've got this player and this player. But, like, rewind three weeks ago. You guys were like, F Nashville. They're going to just get blown out right. of the water. Like, well, did you see the— um, It's so funny how people's tunes change. Nash, the mascot. For Nash, the Predators, really? uh, tweeted Nash. at ESPN um, because they all obviously picked the Blackhawks to win round one, and now they have Black or er, Nashville winning all of round two in six or seven. Of uh, and he was like, "Why don't you guys stick to basketball and whatever else you actually talk about? Exactly, leave, leave hockey to us." So, I don't know. I think uh, uh, when I'm at work, I listen. There's a TV on behind me, so I have like an NHL network and like right. ESPN on all the time, and they're finally now starting to talk about. It's so like, so Nashville. Yeah. It's so like, okay. After like, they talk about how the Blackhawks are firing everybody because that's what you do when you lose, when you get swept. <laughs> because this is... That's going to solve said, the problem. They said something yesterday, like, because this is unacceptable and the, to make sure this never happens again to us. Like, the, calm down. If the Patriots would have lost the first round of the playoffs this last year, Belichick and Tom Brady would have still had jobs. Right. Like, everybody needs to calm the F down. Yeah. All right, last series we got to talk about here is we've got Max Walpoff, one of our NHL correspondents, with us this morning. Uh, Rangers, Senators... You talk about it in the sense that you forget almost. I honestly forget that the Senators are in the series that are here. I mean, the Rangers pulled a bit of an upset as well, too, in round one. Uh, Max, we'll start with you, then we'll go to you, Jamie. Talk to me about the Rangers Senators uh, series. It kicks off tomorrow evening, uh, and who is the favorite to come out victorious in this series? I think a lot of this series is going to depend on two questions, and that is Is Henrik Lungfist as good as he has said in the first round? And how hurt is Eric Carlson? Eric Carlson is the engine of the Ottawa offense, despite the fact that he's also a defenseman. But according to a report recently, he's been playing with two hairline fractures in a foot, which is not comfortable to skate on. But Ottawa does have more offensive gifts than the Rangers did. The Rangers had to go through a war with Montreal, even though it was six games. They have... Jimmy Vesey, who has yet to get going. They have Oscar Lindbergh and Kevin Hayes, who had great face-off numbers against Montreal. But I still give I give this series to the Rangers mostly because I don't know how hurt Eric Carlson is, and I don't think Dion Phaneuf or anybody behind Carlson is going to be able to back up those defensive numbers. Well, and the thing, too, with this, I don't think they also have guys like Joe Thornton who are playing on a torn ACL and MCL for the entire first-round series as well, too. If you can have that kind of... I just... I, we talked about this yesterday in halftime, Tanner and I did, and I still have not fully fathomed how you can do something like that and still be semi-successful at the same time. It's hockey. You well, need your legs to skate. How does that work, well, Max? Explain this to me. Okay, well, okay. So fun fact about that. Chris Chelios, now an NHL Hall of Famer, when he was playing with Detroit, he did not realize that he had torn off his ACL. So, <laughs> how do you not uh, know that? H- hang on a second. His His legs are just tree trunks they are so strong and when he actually went for a doctor's exam after one season the doctor said so when did you tear your acl and chris was like wait what he he wrote about this in his book made in america a very quick read and it's a it's so it's so well done where he talks about the stories of his life and one of those was how he played almost a full season with a torn acl and didn't realize I can barely get out of bed if I have, like, a cramp in my pinky toe. Like, how does that work to play a series with a full ACL? But, Jamie, your thoughts about the, about this series here with the Rangers? Uh, I think the Rangers were obviously feeling a little down after their first couple of games in round one and then obviously came back and, I believe, won three in a row. Um, so I think if they can go into round two, they're not going to get as much resting time as Nashville did or, or – uh... You know, anybody else would have a sweep. So, and Ottawa's going to be a tough opponent, too. Right. So hopefully they'll be able to keep the momentum into round two. I think I, I believe I have the Rangers advancing. You do. Yeah. Uh, in my first bracket I made, I don't think I did. Because, uh, you know, that bracket was garbage. But, um, but I think I have them going in seven. Very this series. nice. So. There you go. All right, Max, we got to let you run, unfortunately, but we appreciate you swinging by this morning. Uh, where can people find you on social media if they want to keep up with the latest uh, sports news from yourself? Uh, people could find me at max underscore w o l p o f f on Twitter. Uh, the same letters, but minus the underscore for Instagram. And I'll be snapping away because I've got one more week of classes here at Boston University, and then I am heading home. Woo! Finally, get excited, Max. Well, uh, do a, do a wonderful job on finals, and I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon with all the chaos uh, here with the with uh, playoffs. Just one one final thing. Just breaking now. The Boston Bruins. Uh, 
the Boston Bruins officially name Bruce Cassidy as the full-time head coach for next oh, season. Oh, there we go. You heard it here first. Bruce Cassidy, the official new head coach of the Boston Bruins, courtesy of our NHL correspondent, Max Walpoff. Thanks, Max. We'll talk to you soon, sir. Thank you very much. All right, there goes Max Walpoff on the Morning Brew this morning. Great to hear from him. Uh, a lot of... A lot, a lot of stuff to digest, of course, and I did want to throw up our picks, of course, on the screen for those that were wondering. Uh, Jamie, so here's the graphic of yours of what you chose. Uh, so you've got Predators in six, Ducks in seven, Rangers in seven, Penguins in six. Uh, I, I'm only slightly different uh, in the sense that I have Preds in six, uh, Ducks in five, Rangers in seven, Capitals in six. So a little different from what you've got. Yeah, uh, but at the same time, uh, it keeps us both honest in that sense. Um, so I'm curious to see what happens. I mean, I'm getting excited. I mean, I think a Predators Ducks conference final would be exciting. I mean, I think Anaheim has proven that they can be that team to beat uh, in, in the Eastern Conference as well, too. So, um, or Western, Eastern, Eastern. How do they? How do they do that? Anaheim's on the West Coast. How is? How are they playing Nashville in the same bracket? Um, I never understand how they cut the, how they cut the, the leagues in half. I have no idea. Who knows? Doesn't make any sense to me. However, honestly. I do think the Ducks are going to win because I think everyone just thinks Connor McDavid is a god and he's great. Everybody he's does, phenomenal. Of I mean, but that's like counting on. Well, I guess LeBron. Okay, <laughs> but it's the same. You're calling thing. Connor McDavid and LeBron the same person? I'm just saying everyone in Cleveland, you know, throws their weight on LeBron. Like everyone expects LeBron to carry the Cavs. Everyone expects 19 right. year old Connor McDavid to carry. The I just Oilers. blows my mind. 19 year old Connor McDavid, the captain. Right. He probably walked into Edmonton first. They'd be like, look at me. I'm the captain now. Like, Get at me. I mean, be like, all right, Connor. Get after it, bro. Good right. luck. And you can't even be mad at him because he's just great. Right. Uh, Jeff Childs on Facebook because we have Jeff Shibe that watches Chill. Oh, that's right. Childs uh, says Nashville, St. Louis should be a great series. Interested to see how Nashville handles Schwartz and Tarashenko as well, too. You know I've been hanging around my hockey friends when I can actually pronounce some of these names. <laughs> Like, uh, is that you like? It's like I did. I felt good. I'm like, ah, Tereschenko. I know that name. <laughs> Get at me. <laughs> uh, Heather also says that Jamie Josie sounds better, or Josie, or Jose. I don't know. How oh, J O S I. You just impressed me, and now it's it's Josie. Josie. I'm, I'm assuming. I'm, I'm kidding. I figured it's, it's Yossi. Is it Yossi? <laughs> yeah. Roman Yossi. Josie. Jamie Yossi. Jamie Yossi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll be honest. Like, we already, we already talk about how your name is, like, the weirdest name to spell. And people, like, apologize for spelling it the right way. They're like, oh, I'm sorry I spelled it J-A-Y-M-E-M-E. -E. It's like, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, it's not J-A-I-M-E right. or J-A-Q-X Batman symbol double V. I don't know. Like, get it together, people. Unbelievable. Okay, we got to get out to the non-sports related things. Is there anything else? I don't remember if there's anything else sports related things. We talked about it all. Rockets are doing gave away beer. Jeter and Bush are best friends. Taco Bell's offering beer in Canada. Freaking Canada. Uh, talked about hockey. I think we need to talk about non-sports related things because I feel like the world continuously loses their mind more and more as the days go by. Because the world seems more and more dumb. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, and I, I'm really mad about this. I was really hopeful that I was going to get a, a friend of mine on that actually has aspirations to work for Nordstrom. She's still working her way through the, the whole college bit, but I couldn't get, couldn't get her on. But if you haven't heard about this, uh, Nordstrom apparently is just being crucified on social media because they are selling $425 pairs of uh, distressed jeans that have fake mud stains on them. I think four hundred twenty-five dollars for distressed jeans. Not that I would ever pay that, but that's like cause that's just a pair of jeans. You know the economy's bad when your jeans are stressed out. No, I'm kidding. That's a bad joke. <laughs> like I have such distressed jeans. Like people spending four hundred dollars on a pair of jeans. Not that I've ever done how, it, but it's not unheard of. How does this make sense? But fake mud. Like, can you wash them? Does like, the mud I'm come going off? to be the most self-conscious washer. I'm going to be like, it won't come off. Like, what happens? Like, how are you supposed to know if it's ever clean? And it, and and I, I, the only thing I had, not the only thing, but the issue I had with this is that one, they look stupid. They do. And two, who oh, purposely wants to be wear dirty clothes? The dirt does not wash out. In case anyone's wondering, I just came across that. <laughs> Uh, is it is it dye? It has to be like a dye or something that's like locked into the pants. Yeah. So everyone's saying like it's to make them look like they're a working man. Like, oh, come on. Like, that's it? You're so pretty that you buy fake mud? Like, you can't. And I, and I see like some people being like, well, what about the real working men? Like, 
<laughs> and now you have these fake jeans, and they worked hard to get mud on their jeans. Shut up to everybody. This Just is stupid. Shut your mouth. Four hundred twenty-five dollars for a pair of jeans is dumb. Fake mud on your jeans is dumb. Hashtag team leggings. Hashtag team leggings. Uh, apparently, they uh, a pair of Top Shop uh, clean knee mom jeans sold for ninety-five bucks, where the knees of the mom jeans the very typical mom jeans are like clear plastics you can see the knees they have pairs of jeans now or plastic pants that they're see-through jean like they're like yeah. plastic yeah we were we were looking at those yesterday i told tanner he needs to buy a pair yeah but like that also and i i mean our, one of our, our good friends james is here yesterday too and i was talking with and james was like well he's like that way i could actually show off like my cool boxers and that made me think i'm like why do we spend so much time designing underwear and boxers and all that stuff at least for guys Nobody ever sees them. Right. Like I know, understand. Like yeah, you can see them right before things are about to happen. But like, honestly, how many people like have you ever stopped and been like, "Damn, boy!" Like, I, no. that's so cool. You have some tacos on your boxers. No, like, but I have been like, "Those are boxers, not briefs." Mm-mm. Yeah, I'd be like, I'm actually, I'm actually really tired, guys. Like, I can't. Like, it's not happening tonight. But like, that would be like an interesting thing, though. Like to actually show, th- like show them off because I and people I'm sure would be like, "Ah, you're showing your underwear." Be like, well. I'm styling, though. Like, isn't that like, a, like an L.A. thing or a New York thing to do? I'm, plastic, I'm the least plastic fashionable person. Plastic see-through jeans. They have shoes like that, too. Like, um, Didn't they used to have like those little gel shoes or whatever? Yeah, like, but, I know my wife had yeah, those. Yeah, but those weren't in clothes. So like, they have plastic boots, right. like heel boots, like pointed toe, whatever. Think about how sweaty your feet get. Like Buying plastic anything to keep I'm on your body I'm thinking how sweaty my legs would be having plastic dumb. jeans on. That dumb. sounds horrible. It's going to get foggy in there. You're going to be all musty. <laughs> like, what if you get moldy in there? Like, yeah. Ugh. Bad idea. I can't do that. That would. That's enough to make me wasted, honestly, on a wasted Wednesday. I could not Could not deal with that. Uh, Luis says, only in Brazil they allow beer in their soccer matches. One of the reasons I hate hooligans. Ah, so you, he doesn't even get to go and have beer at any other establishments. Huh. That's interesting. Huh. That is rather surprising, though. But I do agree, though. The South American uh, soccer fans are, like, another level. In all honesty, for those that like are consider themselves a fan or a diehard fan, like go to South America and watch a derby match between some of the South American teams. Nothing you will ever experience again in your life. Hmm. Whole nother level. You think like Red Sox Yankees is bad? Like no, <laughs> not even in the same ballpark. Honestly, uh, I also found this interesting uh, on the topic of uh, Hispanics. I guess I mean we talked about Taco Bell. We've talked about I mean just referencing this as well too. This is just one of those things. You you know this. I'm not political. I just try to stay out of it and let the people that are in office figure that out for themselves because they're doing something right. I don't know. Or not. Depending on no matter what side of the fence you fall on. Uh, But I laugh at stupid things like this. Okay. Um, Ted Cruz apparently has come out saying that he wants El Chapo, the famous drug lord, uh, and his other drug lords to pay for Trump's wall. Oh. So... For those that don't know, President Trump wants to build a wall uh, between the United States and Mexico to help with immigration. Uh, But Ted Cruz came out with some tweets recently saying that he believes that El Chapo and his drug lords should help pay for the $14 billion um, fortification of this wall. They're not even American. Well, exactly. But that's what President Trump was saying, though. He was like, we're going to build the wall. We're going to make Mexico pay for it. So now Ted Cruz is saying, well, why don't you just get the, the criminals to pay for it? And then since they're already like in custody, like they're not doing anything with their money. I can pay for it. I mean, I logistically it makes sense, but it's not. It right. Make like, sense. I mean, what, are the, what on what grounds can you uh, can you like be like, all right, El Chapo, like hand over your pocketbook. And they want 14 billion dollars. Right. LeVar Ball is like, that's a lot of shoes. Yeah. Wow. $14 billion will go a long way towards building a wall that will help keep America safe, Cruz said in a tweet on Tuesday. Mm, mm, mm. Hmm. Uh, once again, not a political person, but when there's LOL moments in the political world, it makes me kind of laugh a little bit. Yeah. Um, we've heard a lot about ISIS. We've heard a lot about the terrorist attacks. Uh, apparently, the United States doesn't need to do the Navy. <laughs> it doesn't need to do the SEALs. It doesn't need to have super secret intelligence. They just need to hire more wild boars, apparently. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't heard about this, Yahoo News and others have reported saying that uh, a wild boar kills three ISIS fighters and injures five others. Uh, this is uh, coming off the back of these. These eight gentlemen were trying to go and were in the process of getting ready to go take out a small village or do something illegal. I don't remember the official details about this, but they they were hiding in this, this thick branch area, basically, and they stirred a wild boar, and it came at them. And... It killed three of them <laughs> and injured five more. Like, I know wild boars are like some scary looking things, but the fact that 
that's all it took. Like, you don't need grenades. You don't need, like, homing missiles. You just need a couple of wild boars on the ground. Right. I just find it, the story, so odd because if these guys are from ISIS, like, they probably have a gun on them. That's the thing. Like, like they why were going, they were, about, they were about to go and do illegal things. And, yeah, that would be my thought, too. But I guess I, I've never encountered a wild boar. So I guess I don't know how, how wild said wild boar can be. I, I mean, mean, like... To pass through eight people, kill three of them, and injure five, like, that's, it didn't take 30 seconds. Like, it probably took yeah. some time. Like, grab a rock, throw it on its head, <laughs> kick him in the mouth. How, like, I how, don't know. How coherent are you going to be when you have a bloodthirsty boar chasing at you, though? Yeah, but when there's eight of us, you'd think one of them. These are people kill people. They should know how to kill a boar. You'd think. I mean, I'm, not, I'm happy they're dead, but I'm right. just saying. <laughs> I just couldn't this believe this, honestly. This is embarrassing for them. ISIS, you suck. Right. Uh, Luis also agreeing with us, saying that he sounds like that idea of having El Chapo pay for the wall sounds like a pretty good idea. He's like, those drug lords are disgustingly rich, so why not? Make them pay for it. <laughs> Makes total sense to me. But yes, uh, the United States apparently needs to enlist more wild boars to help fight ISIS. So I, I'm waiting for Donald Trump to come like tweet out, be like, you know, I, wanna, I want him to give out like purple hearts to like this wild boar now. I'd be like, you are a true American. Like he's, been, he's my best friend, actually. That was all part of a plan. Oh, I trained him. I trained him. I need Tanner, like, just to, like, I just need, like, a Tanner Trump voice, like, modifier. Like, just, he's the best. Love the wild boars. Like, I don't know. I just thought it was hilarious that the fact that that actually took place. So, more power. More power to you there, uh, wild boar. Keep fighting the good fight uh, to keep America strong or just to protect your family, I guess. Boron, I guess. Um, today, uh, we didn't do a Yes Drama yesterday but I didn't know if there was anything you wanted to tie into a yes drama or if there was just in general anything else you wanted to talk about. Um, I do have one more thing that oh. I wanted to give you. No, you go ahead. Go first. So uh, we all know what Uber is, obviously. Uber is the official sponsor of Jamie uh, because of, of your, for your transportation, which I think is, is awesome. Um, they apparently are hard-pressing to have flying cars by 2020. Like flying transportation, like – Literally, like, you, you mean you talk about their competitor, Lyft. Like, they are going to literally lift you off the ground and bring you to different places. Do... You look puzzled. You're like, wait a minute. Because I'm sure it's not going to be like the Jetsons. Like, like well, I mean, obviously, if I could keep mean? my car in a suitcase, that would be incredible. Um, So I don't understand, like, the, the lift off, the landing. I don't see this happening. So Uber is going to head to Dallas to f- have their, like, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. They is, we're, they're also going to do it there, and they're also going to do it in Dubai as well, too, because when I think of flying, I think of Texas, and I think of Dubai. Makes total sense. Yeah. I'm assuming it's because there's a ton of space down in Texas, of course. But, uh, yes, apparently you will have to – if you want to ride one of these, though, um, you're, you're going to have to obviously pay a pretty penny to get involved with it. But, yeah, uh, Uber unveiled this back in October. It's called Uber Elevate. Okay. Makes sense, I guess. But they will be flying devices, basically, that multiple people can get in and use it as a transportation. They can fly up to 100 miles an hour in 40 minutes. Or they can fly 100 miles in, up to, in 40 minutes. That's what it is. But they have an actual prototype for this? They're in the process of working on it. Yeah, the, the big elephant in the room with all of this, though, does center around that the FAA takes forever to approve things. So last I checked, we're only three years away from 2020, and it's takes, it takes a long time. Two and time. a half almost. Yeah, it takes a long time to, to put stuff like this together, and to have working prototypes in two and a half years seems a bit ridiculous. Not to mention, like, air traffic. Like, there's no stoplights in... Right. Like, who has the right of way? And, like, are they going to communicate with helicopters and airplanes? Probably not. I, I, I think this is ridiculous. Like, then we're going to have to have all the regulations. Like, think of already, like, of all the, like, click it or ticket and, like, don't drink and drive. Like, what are the regulations for flying and driving? Or what are the regulations for? I mean, I understand, like, there's going to be trained pilots or drivers or whatever, but still, like, is that just more to make a statement? Like, I can drive. Keep them relevant. Like, well, yeah, of course. I mean, 100 miles in 40 minutes, like, yeah, that's that's obviously like an hour and a half drive or a little bit more than that to an extent depending on where you're going and what you're doing. So I can understand why some people be like, all right, got to get there, got to make it happen kind of thing. I don't know if I'd do it. It's not an airplane. Like, I feel you like don't I know would if be, you would try it? I feel like I oh, would be terrified. I, ter- I feel like sure. I'd be terrified. Be like, I would try it. Who are you, random person? I would try it. I just don't really see it happening in Jim, my Uber years. Elevate driver. 
I mean, the day you take an Uber Elevate to come to the studio, I'll be like, all right, you you fancy, Jamie. I get, you. I see what you're doing. I saw a video the other day of a guy who had a drone and he t- attached his hammock to it. I and saw that. Flew, People are calling around. that that was fake. Well, maybe. I don't know if that's actually true or not. Robert says that that would absolutely be nuts and also says, kill a boar. Good morning, people. Good morning, Robert. Good to see you this morning. Uh, Luis also says, Uber going Jetson. Yeah, I think so. Like, that's what I feel like that this is. I mean, but like I said, if the, if we can get to a point where our cars can fold up into a suitcase that I can put in a locker, I'm all about that life. I will gladly pay money to do that. Like, so much more room. Like, my garage is already very squished because I have a couple of storage things and a car in there. If I can just keep my car in a suitcase but then think about the theft right like, oh stole your car like it's so much easier to go grand theft auto on somebody like you don't have to like push them out of their car and be like oh got your suitcase got your car do, do, do. run away got a maserati <laughs> like that kind of thing like i don't know what else did you have you made it seem like you had something else for me no you asked me for my yes drama and it, this kind of goes with like the nordstrom and expensive jeans and just like like they're not even a name brand that i knew so yesterday to talk about name brand stuff, Kylie and uh, Kim Kardashian <sighs> launched some new lipsticks, and it, it's like fifty dollars for like two or three lipsticks. I don't or lip glosses or mattes or whatever you you're call the, them. You're the woman. You tell me. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and that's my drama is that it's dumb to spend a hundred dollars on four lipsticks. Stupid. Is, is it? Is the plural lipstick sticks? Lipstick eye sticky lipsticks. Stick, stick, sticks. Yeah, be lipsticks. Stickians. I'm not sure how that works. But that was my, okay. And Heather is commenting it's 40 for $4 because she saw that I saw that she bought him yesterday and I told her it was dumb. But I'm going to try him still. Okay, I was trying to track how that all worked together. But that's my drama. Don't spend $40 on four lipsticks. Don't be an idiot. Don't give Kim Kardashian any more money. Seriously, it all goes right to her ass. Oh, wait, that's the calories that she has. Anyway, Josh says that gives a whole new meaning to six foot, the hashtag six foot flyer. Bring it back, Josh. Hashtag six foot flyer. <laughs> I love it. Jeff also says, Jeff Scheibe says, they probably said the same thing when cars were replacing horses. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, anytime technology takes that next leap, people, of course, are always like, it'll never work. Cell phones, please. Right. You know, like, I don't even know what else. Laptops, come on. Smartwatches, get out of here. Live streaming on Facebook, it'll never work. People will just be taken away soon. People will just kill each selves. Like, unbelievable. Like, TVs, all that stuff. Lights, power. I mean, for God's sakes, yeah. lights. You know? Gravity. I don't know. That's, that's a given. Anyway, I don't know. Like, I get it. People, people are always very hands-off when it comes to that kind of a thing. So I get that. But at the same time, try it, I guess. Maybe I'll try it. I don't know. I'll try it. I, you, I know. Jamie sure. will try everything once, I feel like. Are you that kind of person? Uh, yeah. Like, I, I, would, I would try that drink. I would try that food. I would try Ooh, that experience. Ooh, not food. <sighs> I have, like, super bad anxiety when it comes to trying new food. Ah. Because I'm such a big texture person, and I don't want to, like, ugh. Fair enough. So, yeah. I get that. No, that makes total sense. Uh, last call on our questions of the day. We've had some great responses so far. Uh, what tech do you own that you are skeptical of the government following you, following you on? And then number two, scale of one to ten, how excited are you? Round two of the NHL playoffs. Jamie's a ten. I'm an eight. We've had people in with sevens. Uh, other people are like, meh. I think Max made it sound like he's beside himself excited as well, too, when he was here earlier. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, like I said, I'm not really worried. I mean, because I already realized that we live in, like, a Truman's World style anywhere where, like, the government controls everything anyway. Like, if they wanted to, they already know exactly where I am. They're listening to me talk to them right now. Hello, government. They could come <laughs> through the door of the studio at any point and haul me away for that one time I stole Pokemon cards from a Walgreens when I was 12. Like, they could come get me if they really wanted to. Did you steal Pokemon cards? I did, but I put them back. Ah. I wanted to know if I could do it. I used my, I used my at that time, little baby brother as a front. <laughs> had him in the stroller. I, roller, I used to roll a blade up to Walgreens. I would take my roller blades and put them in the, the, whatever, the little basket underneath the stroller. Walking around the store, do 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 Walked up, was interested in i think it was pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh cards i don't remember which one it was i think it was i think it was pokemon i don't know wasn't a big my, my parents were very like don't play pokemon so it's, it's the devil's game blah 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 kind of a thing and i'm like well i want to play pokemon <laughs> sounds like fun <laughs> anyway got in the store was looking at a pack i'm like okay i don't have the money for it but i'm like i want to know if i can steal this i always felt like i was pretty crafty so i opened the package and then i put it inside the slot of my like the like the boot of my of my rollerblades. I'm like, all right, if they catch me, I'll say it fell in, whatever. Walked out of the store, didn't buy anything. Maybe that was the first indication. Walked out, got to like a block away, and I was like, 
okay, I guess I can do this. Interesting. And then I went back and put it back. And I was like, oh, forgot something. And I actually bought something like a bottle of water or whatever, kind of a thing to make it look like I... Hmm. But uh, yeah, I think the one time I've actually really, truly stolen a couple of things, put it back. So like I said, if the government wanted to, they could have busted me a long time ago for that. I could have been in juvie, serving time, or stealing Pokemon <laughs> cards and using my two, two-year-old brother as an accomplice, you know. Hmm. It's going to go on his permanent record as well, too. Interesting. I don't know. All right. Well, we got to buzz out of here. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, of course, a Wednesday edition of The Morning Brew here on Brew Sports. We appreciate all of you folks for swinging by. Always a good time. Jamie, you did this a couple of days ago. Do you want to try to figure it out, how to get us out of here again? You're good at it. It's just it takes – you got to, like, mentally prepare yeah. yourself because there's a couple of things that people need to, to know. Right. You know? Like that. Or we can, like, go back and Ooh. forth. It's up to you. We'll wing it. You got this. All right. Get after it. Thanks for tuning in. Catch us tomorrow at 9. This is uh, the morning brew. I almost forgot. At 9? I mean, wow, at 7. It's like, no wonder you're always Um, late. 11 a.m. Central Time is Baxter and Tanner on (laughs) halftime. It's like, where are you going? I'm Jamie Evers. Catch me on social media at Jamie underscore Evers, at Baxter Colburn. I'm Jamie. He's Baxter. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Nine.